Hey guys, what's up? I'm Noah, this is Analog Resurgence, and today we're talking about IMAX. So, IMAX. What is it? And also, why should you care? Today, IMAX just feels like a buzzword that gets thrown around. It's always advertised during the summer blockbuster season, but there is some significance in terms of IMAX when we're talking about analog formats. And to understand what it is and where it came from, then we have to go back in time a little bit to Montreal, Quebec, Canada in 1967. So IMAX as a format was actually created by Canadians. Canadians Graham Ferguson, Roman Corder, Robert Kerr, and William Shaw, who worked together to pioneer a multi-screen format for motion pictures. One that would work to really immerse audiences in the movies that they were watching. Now in order to do this, they took 35 millimeter motion picture film and 70 millimeter motion picture film and projected them together in order to create a massive image across multiple screens in special theaters. Theaters. And they initially did this for a National Film Board of Canada project called In the Labyrinth. And this format premiered for the very first time ever anywhere in the entire world in 1967 at the International and Universal Exposition in Montreal. It was kind of like a World's Fair event. Now their film that they created, In the Labyrinth, is actually incredibly cool. And the way that they set it up and told the story to create it is so interesting and the entire film can be viewed online. So I'll throw a link down in the description to the NFB's website where you can watch it. Now after this was a success at the Montreal Expo, they worked together to kind of improve on the system that they had created. It was still very difficult to sync up multiple projectors across one single screen and have it all work out the way they wanted it to. So they worked to create a single projector and a single camera system that would be able to make this larger image that they dreamt of and have it a little bit easier to project. And they they premiered the format for the very first time at Expo 70 in Osaka, Japan with a film called The Tiger Child. So the very first permanent IMAX system anywhere in the world was right here in Toronto at the Cinesphere Theatre. The Cinesphere is an amazing place and if you ever have a chance to see movies there then you definitely should. It's a very large round looking building and inside it has an enormous curved IMAX screen which is the way that IMAX was intended to be seen when it was first created on a screen that was enormous and special. That gave you something drastically different from what you would be seeing in a normal cinema. Now the Cinesphere does project digital movies at this point more regularly, but every so often they do switch it over to project true 70 millimeter IMAX movies instead. And they usually do this for more special presentations, such as nature documentaries, like the incredibly beautiful looking North of Superior, which was made in 1971 using IMAX cameras. And it includes just beautiful aerial shots using IMAX film that were mounted to airplanes and helicopters. So what exactly makes IMAX film so special and how do they achieve this larger image when they're shooting on the cameras? Well it comes down to the size of the film and how it moves through the camera. See IMAX film is shot on 70 millimeter film. Now 70 millimeter or sometimes it's called 65 millimeter film as well is still used in certain movies like Quentin Tarantino's The Hateful Eight. But film like that is still shot normally like 35 millimeter, 16 millimeter, and Super 8 film through movie cameras where the film travels vertically and captures the images above and below each other on the film. Now the IMAX system took that 70 millimeter film and flipped it horizontally, which makes it a little bit more like a photo camera where the images on the film are captured left and right beside each other, as opposed to above and below each other. And in moving the film through the camera like this, it means you can capture wider, more specialized frames on your negative. Now a true IMAX frame is 15 perforations long. Now it's about 10 times the size of a 35 millimeter movie frame. This also means that in like ideal conditions, IMAX is one of the greatest film formats of all time. The amount of detail and color and contrast that can be achieved in a perfect exposure on IMAX 70 millimeter film is almost untouched by any other format. It's an amazing system and 
and it can look beautiful when you see true IMAX film projected. Now it's important to look at how different movies are shot, especially when they're put onto IMAX screens. See, many films are converted to IMAX, so they're just converted to take use of a larger screen. But a certain number of films out there are actually shot using IMAX cameras, either film or digital. For example, sequences in The Dark Knight were shot using IMAX cameras in true 70 millimeter IMAX. Now you can see this when looking at these special sequences and the aspect ratio changes between different shots. So anything that is taller like that than the normal frame is shot on an IMAX camera. So it's a different aspect ratio that if you're shooting entirely in true IMAX, then you're taking true advantage of the full IMAX frame and screen that you'll be projecting on. Now, some films were shot entirely in 35 millimeter and then would be transferred to 70 millimeter for special IMAX showings. Now you can blow these up and you can sometimes get more detail out of them, but you're not shooting in the true IMAX aspect ratio for the bigger image. See, if we take a look at these Harry Potter IMAX frames, for example, the area at the top and the bottom would normally be used if this were shot using full IMAX cameras. But because it was only shot on 35 millimeter, this area goes unused and isn't technically true IMAX. Now, over the past number of years, IMAX has undergone large renovations to convert a lot of their theaters into digital. And a lot of them just don't project 70 millimeter film anymore. These headlines touting the wow factor buzzwords of IMAX 4K laser projection are just honestly a little lackluster especially if you ever have the chance to look at an IMAX film print or see an IMAX film projected for you properly. 4K actually feels like just a bit of a step down from that quality. Now today there are still productions that use 35 millimeter film entirely and even incorporate some 70 millimeter IMAX sequences into their movies, as well as people using really high-end digital IMAX cameras that still capture the same expanded aspect ratio of 70 millimeter IMAX. Movies like Interstellar and Star Wars The Force Awakens and The Last Jedi and Star Trek Into Darkness and Dunkirk and First Man are all movies from the past several years that not just used film in their productions, but also used sequences that had 70 millimeter true IMAX film in them. IMAX film showings are really special and they feel enormous and they feel like something different from a normal movie, but they are harder to find especially in cinemas that are designed for them, like the Cinesphere that just has like a really special, enormous screen. And watching a movie there is an experience. It's something that feels different. So many now are just projecting on slightly bigger screens in digital instead of analog that it's just harder to find instances where IMAX feels like it's worth it. But any instance where you get to see something like IMAX film projected or a special screen of something really unique does just kind of add a little bit something to it, I find. And I think it's just really exciting, which is just something that some movies have lost. The appeal of going somewhere and watching a movie in a space that really deserves it. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed this little bit of history about IMAX and what it is and why I think it's so special. And subscribe if you haven't done so already as I continue to post videos like this about different history histories and formats and cameras and just stuff that I find really interesting and I like to be able to share with you guys. So thanks so much and I'll see you guys soon.